In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. This prayer from the author of Ephesians is found at the end of the reading we heard from Kate this morning, a prayer that the speaker might make known the boldness of the gospel. Ephesians was written as part of the school of Paul, probably by one of his followers, and the thing about Paul is that he never had a problem with boldness. Paul just said what he meant and didn't spend much time on the niceties. He felt his mission was too important, and it's as if in all of his movement and speech, he knew the clock was ticking in his world. Paul always seemed fully aware that while God's time is infinite, Paul's time on earth was not. We've been getting a similar vibe from Jesus these past few weeks. We've had some extensive teaching on bread and wine and how Jesus describes his relationship to these fundamental foods. Whether he's preaching alongside the sea in Capernaum or inside the synagogue itself, he's preaching with a, a fervor and impatience that makes it feel as if he knows his time is limited. And as such, he is making statements, as Stephen preached last week, that are deliberately provocative. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Jesus is pushing, offering his listeners outrage upon outrage. He's trying to get their attention, grappling with those both inside and outside his circle of followers, which leaves almost all of them wondering how he dares to use words in the ways he does. For some, it's too much. These teachings of Jesus are too much. One translation reads, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life. So how about for us? What do we do with this portrait of Jesus? What is he trying to say? Who exactly are we encountering this morning? Jesus gives us a hint in the comparison he makes between himself and the food, the, the manna, the Israelites received in the desert. But it's helpful to have a bit of a handle on that story in order to look at some of the subtext or not so subtext in Jesus' words. You might remember the story. Moses has led the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt. They are following Moses, who is following God's commands, and they find themselves wandering through the desert, journeying toward the land that has been promised to them. And Setting aside all the political and nationalistic ramifications, let's just go with the story this morning. They are wandering through the desert. And I think it is fair to say the experience has not brought out the best in them. They are complaining and whining. They are miserable and scared. They want to know why Moses made them leave Egypt, where at least they had food. They want to know why he has sentenced them to what appears to be a long and torturous death from starvation and exposure. No one is expressing any appreciation for anything he has done. In short, they are making Moses crazy. So Moses goes to God, who then ensures that the people will have enough to eat as they travel through the desert. God sends manna, this kind of ephemeral yet sustaining bread, and it rains down from heaven. It comes every day but the Sabbath. There is enough of it every day so that the people have as much as they might want to eat. Which, incidentally, I find to be an interesting part of the story. It's not that everyone gets an equal portion that it's the same set amount for everyone. But instead, 
Each person gets exactly what they need for that day. If you are really hungry, you get enough to fill your belly. If you aren't so hungry, you get what you need. Whatever fills you, whatever is enough for you, the manna given to all the people will be enough for you individually. And so Jesus, when he brings up manna, is playing with the idea of being fed on a daily basis. He, like the manna, is food and sustenance to those who follow him, just as the manna was to those out in the desert with Moses. God has provided both. Then Jesus takes it a step further. The manna, the old bread from heaven, was enough to feed a person's mortal body. And Jesus gets that this is important. He's all about making sure that the bodily needs of people are met, that they are healed from illness, and that they are fed. Jesus seems to know that you can't preach about eternal things if the basic daily needs for survival are not being met. In fact, just a day or two earlier, he was on the other side of the Sea of Galilee feeding the crowd of 5,000 with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. He gets the need to feed our bodies. But today, he's making a, a different kind of comparison. He is like the manna, that old bread of heaven, but he is also different. Jesus is the new bread from heaven, is the kind of bread that God has sent to feed our souls, the kind of wine to quench the thirst of our spirits, to assuage the deep longing and hunger, to know what it is to be safe, to be loved, to hear truth, to know righteousness and experience mercy. Jesus is the kind of bread that feeds us in an all-encompassing way, an eternal way. He says, the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus uses the images of flesh and blood, manna, bread and wine, physical necessary things to speak about the business of the soul, the necessary spiritual things that will feed all our souls. To follow Jesus and hear his teachings, to learn to love and heal, to learn to listen and to forgive, to strive to live and exist as Jesus exists, is to experience what it means to be fed on a level deeper than anything mere bread and wine, mere manna can do. Jesus is offering himself, and to accept what he is offering, to believe in the teachings of Jesus, to follow him as the manifestation of God come down from heaven, is to inhale, to ingest, to drink deeply from the cup of a completely different kind of life. It is life that can feed each of our souls. And if we choose to emulate Jesus, to draw ever closer to the image of Jesus and do our great and small, brave and good things in this world, if we choose to love extravagantly and give of ourselves with all of our gifts and flaws and joys and fears, this gift of Jesus, it will be enough, enough to sustain our souls for the long journey and provide us with a life that consistently defies our expectations. Jesus is the new bread, and Jesus is enough. <laughs>